Coach, what's the difference with Marcus Ball this year? Coach Myers was talking him up. He said he's come a long way. What's specifically what's well, the difference? Well, first of all, having Coach Myers talk him up is a start. You know, that, that really is. You know, the, the, the reality is part of the pro process of college football is understanding the whole realm of college. You know, academically, socially, uh, we all know how that kind of started a little bit. And, and, and you know, the, the thing is, it's, if you just, you know, give it time and you, you let it, you, you, you know, you love them a lot as a person, then you kick them in the rear a lot as a person. And uh, the next thing you know, if they have a good heart and a good mind and good soul, eventually that, because I'm going to tell you, he was a highly rated tight end coming out of high school. The guy was, you know, really, to be honest with you, I thought he was the best in the country by my eyes. That's why we went after him. Um, and, and now he's starting to play like it. And uh, he's gaining confidence every day. His, his demeanor is changing. And, and uh, obviously, uh, we're very pleased with where he is. Um, you know, he and Nick, the last two games, you know, the last time I spoke here, I, I told you and I was honest about it, I didn't think Nick was starting to play like I know Nick potentially can play. The last two games, Nick's played the potential. Um, by far his best game of his career was Friday night, uh, or I'm sorry, Saturday night. Uh, but, you know, the, the big thing is, uh, obviously, they weren't, you know, targets of passes, and in our world, we don't really care. Um, bottom line is, is, do we have that W at the end of the day, and uh, do we have the ability to help our team win? And, and both of them, I thought, did a great job with that. Uh, far left, Doug? Tim, um, with the tight ends, but also the offensive line, just the way Everybody blocked on Saturday. Urban had said that it was the best offensive line performance of the week. Just what have you seen with all of that, with the progress? We have, you guys had so many guys coming back, but what built up to that best performance on Saturday? You know, I, it's, an, it's a great question. And one thing I, I find very interesting is, and, and this is the first time, obviously, all of us, you know, I've been through it, where come back that next year with different expectations and, and what people believe we should be. And the one thing that I, I've learned is that every team is a new team. Every year you got to go through the process of, and I, I think and maybe I mentioned before, who are the guys that are going to play this role and Evan Spencer roles? And who are those guys and what did we do? What do we do best? Who can do it best? How can we do that best? And you got to go through those, 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 those uh, reps in a game to truly know who are those people? The other thing is now, I mean, let's don't, um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people have talked for a long time that football is a great game of emotion. You know, a, a, a Saturday night game in Ohio Stadium is, uh, that's pretty special now. You know what I mean? I mean, that's pretty special. And, and I think the emotion of the game, and I think the ability to, to get on that national uh, stage again, and I, I think all those things add to it. Uh, I, I think we had a great week, week of preparation. I think we did things that our kids really know how to do well. And, uh, you know, when we started going north and south and getting the good double teams that our guys do and all those things, it, it just, you know, they gained confidence. And all of a sudden you can see, like, right there right towards the end of the first quarter and beginning of the second quarter, uh-oh, you know, the, the fire got lit and here we go. And I, I think it's a, a lot of things that go into it. And, you know, the nice thing is we have phenomenal kids. The work ethic every day is good. And, you know, unfortunately, the public has really not seen what we've seen in practice. But if you keep practicing as well as we're practicing, good things are going to happen to you in a game. And that's the part that's, for all of us has probably been a little bit frustrating is we practice pretty well. And then we haven't related in a game as well as we liked. And I thought uh, Saturday night we were able to do that pretty well. Front row, Kim. Uh, yeah, Tim, going back, going back specifically to uh, Nick, uh, did you have to cut a lot of fire under him? Or was it, or are, you, are you just seeing a, sort of a natural uh, swoon and then progression? Tim, I really believe in Nick and I, and uh, really I even had a long talk with his father. And, you know, I, one thing that Coach Meyer really demands out of all of us is to make sure we have great communication with our parents and the people, significant others around the world, because you never know what other influencers are going on. And uh, Nick and I had uh, some really honest conversations about uh, performance level. Uh, and, and I think most of it is, and, and you know, doggone it, you know, you get these, you know, all the NFL stuff that goes on. Where am I, you know, I mean, not, he doesn't care. I mean, he does care, but, you know, and, and people are telling him, here's where you are. Now, you better play like that. You better play like that. You better do this and you better do that. And the next thing you know, well, you're really worried about everything else except put your foot in the ground and go four to six seconds, as Coach Meyer says all the time, and just play the game. And, and most of it, and I think I addressed it the last time, most of Nick's things were not 
80% of the game, he played it very, very well. It was like the other part was like, you just want to pull your hair out. Why did you do that? And, I, and most of it, I think, was more pressing than anything. The other thing is he really had to learn because the, the, for two years, he was the relief pitcher. You know, he was coming in. We had a really good guy that was working with him every day. And now all of a sudden, he had to take that role. So the relief pitcher was over. Now he had to come in and be the starter. And, and then he pressed when things didn't go as well as he wanted to early in the year. And, and all of a sudden now, you know, we had a long talk about it uh, on Sunday again. He says, Coach, I've never felt better about preparation for a game. I felt more relaxed. I knew, hey, listen, when, when they lined up like this, I knew exactly what they were going to do. I felt really comfortable about the preparation. And that's my job. And my job is to make sure he feels very, very comfortable. You know, behind the scenes, we probably did more walkthroughs than we have done before. Um, you know, we really, uh, every guy can learn differently. You know, some guys really learn really well on film. Some guys really learn really well on a chalkboard. Some guys really, really learn well by walking through it. And uh, I keep trying every day to say, what's the best way to have my two guys, you know, they're really playing significant minutes, learn it. And uh, Nix is probably a better walkthrough guy. So I've changed a little bit what I'm doing and walking through things more so he can get a, not only a visual look of it, but also just a physical part of it as he's going. So it's really the chalkboard on the field walkthrough. I mean, literally walkthrough. Uh, and so I'm doing more of that than I was earlier in the year. Um, because the bottom line is, is if it's not working, find a way to fix it. And uh, that's what a coaching is. And, and so I, I, you know, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I tell you, we, all, we look every day when a guy's not playing to his standards. And Nick's a, I mean, Nick's a phenomenal talent. I mean, we're, you know, I mean, wow. I mean, that guy can, you know, he's six foot six, he's 262 pounds, he can run and, and, and uh, has good power. And, but, you know, I, I really thought uh, that those things are probably making a difference. But more than anything, now he's starting to get a little confidence in who he is, too. Was that the short answer? No, I'm just uh, It was a long answer, Joe was trying to say. Hey, can I ask one last thing? You're, you're in the locker room after the game and in the last couple of days. Putting 38 on Penn State, a team that was number 10 in the country in total defense and stuff. What is the feel, I guess, about this offense? Uh, is it different than, you, than a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago? What, what's, what's your sense of it? Just as so I mentioned earlier, you know, the whole practice thing is we – I really felt every week of practice for about three weeks, we practiced very well. And I felt very comfortable walking out on the field. And some of the execution things just weren't there. And I'm obviously, you know, we're not, you know, we, we know that. You guys have, you know, certainly mentioned it. And I know Coach Myers addressed it. And, but you can sense now their confidence of who we are, what we are, what people are doing, how we're going to go about it. You, yeah, I, there is a different sense to it, a different feeling to it. Now, you know, the, the, Hard part is we got to do it again in New Jersey this week, and then we've got to do it again the next week and the next week, and have great consistency about what we're doing. And that's probably, you know, the, even in games, you know, we have streaks where we're really, boy, it's moving, and then we hit those little laws. And what we really got to do with this offense is get it consistent across the board all the time, and including my position in their play. Front row left, Blake. Coach. Uh you, you obviously did have a solid offensive performance against Penn State, but it was another slow start offensively. Um, it's kind of been a trend this year. Coach Warner attributed that a bit to what other teams were doing schematically that maybe you hadn't seen on film. Is, is that why you guys have been starting slow? What, what's, what's the issue there offensively? Why has it been that way this season? It, it, There's been a little bit of X and O's with it. Uh, obviously, they come in with a game plan, too. And, and you know, what they're trying to do is not let momentum get started early um, because they know, you know, if we get pretty good momentum, I think we're a hard team to handle. Uh, I, they've done a pretty good job of trying to put some pressure on us. You look at most times they've been some kind of blitz from somewhere, and, and uh, we do need to do a better job of that. It's certainly being addressed, and it, it certainly is one of those things that we're looking at. What are the, what are the most significant plays that we have to get that first – first down to make it six yards, seven yards, and now all of a sudden you got a second and short. And, well, you know, in football, if you play ahead of the chains, that's kind of that common term that everybody uses. If you play ahead of the chains, you got a pretty good chance of success all game long. You play behind the chains, and you look at third down efficiency, obviously we've had more third and longs this season than we, we've had for a long time. So you're not your third down efficiency is not going to be as good when you're third and long. Where, the, you know, there were a couple of stretches of, you know, in our, our time here at Ohio State, where all of a sudden our first down efficiency was so good, well, guess what our third down efficiency was? Because everything now, your first down efficiency, you're gaining five and six on first down, 
then all of a sudden you, you, know, you can have a, an average second down and you're still third and one or two. Well, those are really high third down efficiencies. When you're third and eight, third and nine, and those situations now, that, that makes you hustle. I mean, it makes you really hustle. And how, you mentioned the schemes that they're throwing at you. Early. How would you assess the staff um, in terms of making in-game adjustments this season? Well, I think that was the part. I think we, we, that, that's really gotten a, to the place we need it to be. Uh, obviously, uh, there's some games that, you know, they just, you know, I was, you know, kind of like, are you kidding me? You know, you count that number. You said, how many blitzes did they come in with? Uh, but, you know, I, I think that that's certainly getting to be where it needs to be. And it really, a lot of times what happens is, is you know, it, it isn't just what the thought is coming from the press box down or the coaches on the sideline. You know, the big thing is, and still in football, is can you get that thought to that player and him understand the adjustment to go on the field and do a great job of it? And that's the part that I see really getting better. And that's the part that we, you can see us doing better and better and better because every defense is going to walk in and make us adjust throughout a game. Coach Meyer talks about all the time, you know, preparation doesn't stop till the foot hits the ball, right? And you've heard him say that slogan and that thing. Then all of a sudden, a game is about adjustments. What are they doing? What's the chess match going on? And that chess match, and this is where I kind of go back to Tim's question with Nick Manette, is that the fact that he felt better about those adjustments than any game so far this year. Uh, so we made those adjustments, you know, and, you know, and all of a sudden he went back out and he said, I got a clear vision of what this is. Let's go make that. And that's really, that's what happens throughout a game. I mean, it's chaotic in the adjustment part of it, but it really isn't what we understand then. It's what our kids understand when they take the field that we're trying to get them to do. And last question over here to the right play. Coach, uh, the Bobo, Larry Johnson had the mic at the skull session. You know, we see him as maybe more quiet, certainly compared with Mike Frabel, who yeah. did the job previously. I mean, he brought that fire. Was that because of Penn State? or? No, that's Larry. We don't see that. No, that's Larry. Uh, he, I'm going to tell you, Larry is a phenomenal public speaker. And, and when he dresses the team in certain things that Coach Meyer do, he, he's off the charts. He's really, really good at, the, good at it. He has a uh, very dynamic way of presenting a thought. And that really is Larry. Um, you know, we all have, you know, obviously, you know, we all have roles and all have to do the things we do. But I don't know how many guys make it to places like Ohio State that don't have a little bit of that passion in them. Um, so uh, I, I think certainly that uh, he, he is, that was who he was, and I mean, who he is. And I, wasn't that great? I mean, he, I, I was fired up, I can tell you that. I thought he did a great job with that. And that's been pretty, you know, I think the crowd responded very well, too. It was a lot of fun. And we do have one last question. I'm sorry. Hey, You're in the press box. So you've kind of a clinical view of the, yes. how the game unfolds. When JT went in the game, what did you see? Did, did you see an offense that just looked like the way this offense is supposed to look? Well, the one thing that, you know, offense is set up predominantly, you know, you can beat your head against the wall or you can take what the defense gives you. And one thing that JT was able to do is the things that the defense was giving us. And probably when you look at it in that way, you know, because we had a few more quarterback runs and we did some things with him that was probably a little more strength at times, I think, than, than maybe Cardell. But, you know, the bottom line is they both have excellent skills. They both bring a skill set to this football team that, that makes us able to win and continue to win and do the things they do. And I just thought, you know, probably more than anything on Saturday, it was more of, Hey, you know, here's what the defense gives us, you know, and sometimes they'll give us different things. And I thought that was, it probably fit more, a little more maybe in the JT's wheelhouse than Carl's, but it, that doesn't mean Cardell doesn't have strength. JT doesn't. They're excellent players. They both do great things. And, and, and you know, that was probably more than anything because, you know, you can try to beat your head against the wall and run things that the defense are defensing, you know, or you can do things that can hopefully hurt the defense. And that's what we were trying to accomplish.